I'm Dr. Rebecca Bowers, and in this video, I will be discussing some common dysfunctional points and how to tell the difference between them. Quite frequently, these points are tender to palpation, and trigger points and herniated fascial points may even hurt without being pushed on. There are many other reasons a person could have point tenderness, like a pimple, a splinter, a bruise, or something else. All possibilities should be kept in mind, and while visual inspection is sometimes warranted, Often you can feel confident that a tender spot is a dysfunctional point, like one of those listed here, based on palpable findings and how it responds to treatment. Yet when in doubt, visually inspect the area. Learning to palpate the characteristic tissue texture abnormalities of different types of dysfunctional points will allow you to feel confident that you are applying the correct type of technique to the correct type of dysfunctional point. Counterstrain points occur in myofascial tissues and feel like a funnel-shaped sinkhole where the crater center is more deep than its edges. A Chapman's point occurs within deep fascia, like an aponeurosis or the periosteum surrounding a bone, and feels like taut tissue all contracted towards the center of the point in a plane parallel to the skin and frequently has a small nub in the center as well. Many texts teach that the small nub is a required palpatory aspect, but clinically, it is not. A trigger point is within a muscle and feels kind of like a ravioli on a thin band of taut muscle that runs parallel to the muscle fibers. And a herniated fascial point, called a herniated trigger point by some, occurs when fascial tissue protrudes through and gets pinched by a more superficial or deep fascial plane. These will feel different depending on whether the herniated fascial tissue is protruding from a deep through a more superficial layer or is instead superficial fascia protruding through a deeper layer. When the deeper fascia is herniated outwards and being pinched by more superficial fascia, I call it an everted point. And when instead the superficial fascia is herniated inwards and being pinched by deeper tissue, I call it an inverted point. The everted points feel like a nodule of soft tissue that is only a few millimeters diameter at most, while the inverted points feel like a small funnel-shaped distortion of fascia tethered to a deeper point. Around both of these types of points, the fascia is twisted clockwise or counterclockwise. This twisting around the central point is specific to these herniated points and is not something you will feel with a Chapman, a counter strain, or a trigger point, unless there happens to be a herniated point at the same location as one of these other active points. Luckily, that doesn't happen very often, and once you become familiar with the characteristic palpatory feel of each of these types of points, you will be able to recognize when something odd, like a combination of points, is occurring. Some other clues that suggest one point versus another are, for counterstrain points, they are part of a strain counterstrain dysfunctional pair involving agonist antagonist muscle groups. The muscle with the counterstrain point in it will be a little shorter than it should, and the antagonist on the other side will be a little longer than it should. And often the patient complains of pain with active range of motion on the antagonist side. There is a history of startled panic, whether the patient remembers it or not like a motor vehicle accident or other physical or psychological trauma, with the agonist-antagonist dysfunctional pair having been in the shortened counterstrain position at the time of the trauma. For example, I have found counterstrain dysfunction in a patient who was seated when they received a phone call informing them that their mother had died unexpectedly. They had counterstrain points in their biceps, psoas, and rectus abdominis muscles. Counterstrain points tend to occur in the same location for a given structure, and there are charts showing many known points locations. For Chapman points, they are paired anteriorly and posteriorly and associated with specific distant structures or pathology. Treating them is only helpful if their cause is being or has been adequately treated. Otherwise, these points will soon reactivate. They are consistently found in the same locations, and there are charts for many of the known points. A trigger point is associated with an area of tissue texture abnormality called a reference zone, shown in red in this picture. And often pain occurs in this zone as well when the trigger point is pushed on or sometimes even without external stimulus. 
so always when you press on a spot and the patient says it hurts ask them does it hurt only where i pressed or does it hurt around it or somewhere else too if it hurts at a spot other than exactly where you are pressing then it is likely to be a trigger point the reference zone may overlap with the trigger point or be at a distant location sometimes on the opposite side of the body and it has a characteristic shrink wrapped feel a trigger point can occur in many areas of a single muscle each with their own reference zone but there are charts with the most common trigger points and their specific reference zones trigger points occur because a muscle is overstressed most always there is a dysfunctional or structural issue and if the causative issue is not corrected these trigger points will soon reactivate a patient with a herniated fascial point may clue you into that being the problem during the history when describing where and how they hurt, they often press one or more fingers into the spot and may say that they feel like someone just needs to push the spot back in. They also may describe the pain as an ache, pinching, or catching sensation. The treatment is different for the different types of dysfunctional points. How a point responds to treatment will help you feel more or less confident that you have correctly diagnosed the point. The better your palpatory skills, the better your diagnosis. I have other videos that cover the treatment for these types of dysfunctions more in depth, so I will not go into that here. For further information, consider reading one or more of these texts or watching one of my other videos that goes more in depth on these type of dysfunctions and their treatment. I have made this video as a resource for other physicians and body workers. Do not attempt to perform any manual techniques unless you are a physician or body worker or a student under proper supervision.